So first of all, good morning, good afternoon, and uh, thank you for joining this, uh, this event. Um, my name is Marco Calderoni. I am currently the chairman of uh, the Renewable Heating and Cooling European Technology and Innovation Platform. And uh, I'm also uh, chairman of the ESTTP, which is the sort of thermal panel within RHC platform. Uh, and apart from that, in the let's say normal working life, I'm uh, I'm employed I'm employed at Arcan Solution, which is an innovation consultant uh, company based in Italy. Um, well, th this is this event uh, event for us at RHC platform is quite important. We we decided to call it co-creation workshop, uh, trends and priorities in research and development for uh, renewable heating and cooling. Um, why is it uh, important? Well, first of all, because uh, uh, the, um, th this process we are in has been warmly recommended by the European Commission. So uh, we consider this uh, of importance in terms of, let's say, policy and, uh, and research lobbying. Um, and secondly, because it's, uh, it has required lots of effort. So uh, my colleague will, will be explaining you more in detail the entire path and uh, the survey and uh, what led us today to this workshop. But in general terms, I, I would like to say that uh, we are investing a lot of uh, our time uh, and know-how to, to make, uh, to include as many stakeholders from the research and from the industry uh, as possible and come up with a robust document at the end of this uh, process. Uh, which will basically kind of validate what we have been uh, um, writing in our uh, strategic research and innovation agenda. So Alexandra, if you can go to the next slide, please. <clears throat> mm -hmm. Okay. Um, a couple of words about, um, about the renewable heating and cooling platform. Uh, it will be quick, but what is worthwhile mentioning is that we historically are divided into technology panels. So thermal, as I mentioned before, heat pumps, geothermal, biomass, and uh, the district heating and uh, storage thermal storage, of course, uh, technology panel, let's say. Then uh, a few years ago, we have been asked to overlap a second structure, which is what we call horizontal, horizontal working groups. And uh, we are uh, here with focusing also the demand side and our horizontal working groups are cities, districts, buildings, and industries. Next slide, please. Okay, uh, looking at the recent publications, which basically summarize uh, the, the, the work we've been performing at, uh, at the RCA tip, we have uh, published uh, our vision for, uh, for 2050, that was one and a half years ago. And the main message there is that we believe that 100% renewable heating and cooling uh, in Europe is possible, and uh, it is possible by using our our uh, renewable heating and cooling technologies. Next slide. And uh, we have uh, more recently, one, less than one year ago, published the Strategic Research and Innovation Agenda, uh, where we um, investigated and uh, communicated to the audience and to the European Commission, of course, which are, in our opinion, the main issues when it comes to research in our sector. Next slide, please. Uh, and here, uh, I would say the main message is that, uh, again, we, we, we um, bet even more and uh, claim that we could reach, we can reach 100% renewable heating and cooling by 2040, so even 10 years earlier. And uh, additionally, we, we also draw a second scenario where we uh, claim we can reach, even easier, of course, 50% uh, at 2040, considering that other technologies non, not strictly related to our uh, um, uh, technological group uh, can, would play the role in the, in the remaining 50%. Next slide, please. And one message I uh, keep uh, underlying when I present uh, uh, on behalf of uh, RSC ATIP is that um, uh, the outcome of one of uh, 
the previous year studies we performed uh, was, in my opinion, extremely relevant and, uh, and, and I'm really glad to see this. Uh, and this is uh, that a huge share of, let's say, the uh, activities around manufacturing and selling of renewable heating and cooling technologies is actually uh, generated in, in Europe. And that should, in my opinion, be a very, very important message because this shows we are concretely contributing to increasing the, the, the number of jobs uh, in Europe. Next slide. Here, some very quick and uh, probably to some extent uh, already known messages about our renewable heating cooling cooling technologies. Uh, those are local, affordable, cost-effective, scalable, available uh, more or less everywhere and available especially at market level. There, those are already uh, there. We don't need uh, a huge uh, research to, to, to have a 50% uh, renewable uh, um, sector by 2040, uh, but we want to be, do better and, and then we need even more research. Those are cross-cutting, we can combine and uh, that's it. And to summarize, yes, please show all the messages. Uh, this I would like to skip, if you don't mind, because I already took eight minutes. Um, here are some, some comments, let's say. Um, as I mentioned at the beginning, this uh, activity, this process we are uh, in has been recommended by the European Commission uh we have been doing uh, a survey uh on on which are the trends in uh, r d at research and also at industrial level um one of the in my opinion very important outcomes of this survey is that the prior priorities we mentioned in the in our strategic research and innovation agenda are fully consistent with uh, the answers we received uh during the last couple of months uh, from the industry and from the research. Um, and this shows that uh, in the, during the preparation of uh, our strategic research and innovation agenda, uh, the industry had been, has been effectively involved and that our technology platform has a very good understanding of the sector. And this I think is, a, is an important outcome. Um, Last but not least, I would like to highlight that uh, we are currently, as an ATIP, we are currently cooperating quite uh, strongly with another ATIP, which is called ATIPs Net. It's the ATIP for uh, smart networks for the energy, energy transition. Why we're doing that? Because ATIPs Net is mainly uh, electricity ba based, or uh, its aim and uh, members are mainly um, other platforms or companies or associations dealing with electric renewables or even with grids, electric grids, and uh, not only, but to the uh, to a high extent. And we're working together, uh, preparing a common position paper on sector coupling. And by sector coupling, we have mainly electricity and heating and cooling in mind. And uh, in this, we're in doing this, we hope uh, to uh, be able to explain to the electric guys, electricity guys, uh, how important our technologies, uh, especially district heating and thermal storages, are when it comes to sector coupling. And uh, I think that's that was my last slide. Thank you. Uh, I hope this was uh, clear enough and uh, gave uh, a general understanding of, uh, of the ATIP and uh, of the process we're in. And uh, the next speaker is Andre from uh, UREC. Uh, he will be uh, talking about our strategic research and innovation agenda and uh, present the results of the recent survey we've done. The floor is yours, Andre. Thank you, Marco. Uh, just a quick troubleshooting with the presentation and you should be able to see it now thank you very much i will just build on what you already said uh thank you very much for the introduction so the working uh, title of the document that we are preparing at the moment and this uh co-creation co workshop should also uh, serve to feed into uh, this document is uh, called uh, strategic 
uh, implement a strategic report on deployment of RDNI priorities and implementation trends of the RHC technologies. Uh, it's the next uh, strategic document of RHC ETIP and it should be delivered by October 2021. Uh, it uh, partly builds on the previously published RHC uh, strategic research innovation agenda, which was already mentioned by Marco. And th this document will serve to uh, validate the priorities that uh, have been already identified as uh, most important. And the second thing is that it should uh, showcase or identify some RDNI trends uh, uh, currently ongoing in the RHC sectors. And the tools that we have been uh, using uh, and are using uh, uh, have been survey, uh, thorough survey uh, distributed among uh, different uh, players, uh, stakeholders in RHC sectors, uh, interviews, which are currently ongoing, and the current co-creation workshop, which uh, you are participating to today, and of, of course, also desk research. What I would like to do now is uh, briefly go over some uh, highlights that uh, we uh, took from the results and answers of the survey. And uh, I would like to then take, uh, of course, these uh, 10 minutes or so to, to present uh, some of the results to you. Uh, so the response to the survey was not overwhelming, but we did receive uh, close to 100 answers. Uh, I also have to point out that the survey was extremely uh, uh, long and it uh, took a very long time to stakeholders to complete and in some cases up to one hour. So it is, uh, was, uh, this has been of course much appreciated the time that stakeholders that completed the survey spent all this time uh, on completing it. Uh, the answers will be very valuable for the uh, final report, as will be the results of today's uh, co-creation workshop. So we had a quite nice uh, spread and inputs from almost all EU countries, uh, with exception of, uh, I think, three. We had a lot of answers from uh, countries such as uh, Germany, Italy, Spain, or Austria, but also uh, nice uh, numbers of answers from uh, other countries such as France, Portugal, Belgium, etc. Uh, we uh, pointed or aimed the survey at different uh, stakeholders and we tried to classify them in two uh, categories, which was uh, either selling slash developing RT technologies or purchasing using RT technologies. We had uh, mostly uh, success with uh, getting answers from the first uh, category, selling developing RT technologies, where we had overwhelming majority of answers from and also uh, many other stakeholders such uh, as uh, university professors or research centers, uh, energy agencies or uh, local municipalities in different cities. Uh, as was already mentioned by Marco, uh, the, the RT uses these horizontal working groups, uh, which are buildings, uh, districts, cities, industries uh, aligned with and use of technologies that we are covering in RHC ETIP. And also these will be used today for the, the, the division of, of participants among the breakout rooms. And uh, we had a nice division also from the answers to the survey. Participants indicated that uh, they work in with or one or more of these four horizontal sectors. And we had a quite nice division of uh, stakeholders there. Uh, in terms of technologies covered, uh, we had uh, many stakeholders working with solar ther thermal or thermal storage technologies, also with district heating and cooling uh, technologies, uh, heat pumps, uh, but also geothermal and uh, many different uh, technologies. Uh, we had then also good uh, spread in terms of sizes of companies that these uh, stakeholders were coming from. So we reached really uh, the smallest companies up to very large uh, players on the, uh, in, on the EU market in terms of renewable heating and cooling. So uh, up to around 20% was uh, from companies larger than 1,000 uh, employees. Uh, so now to about the results of the survey or some of the results. Um, 
from the stakeholders that were surveyed, uh, majority uh, said that they are conducting internal RDNI activities and that they also have dedicated RDNI uh, departments to handle these activities. And uh, we found out that uh, activities are being conducted across all technology readiness levels, uh, really showing nice spread from TRL uh, 1 to TRL 9 with a uh, bit less activities on the lower tier levels and also a bit less on the on the, the highest uh, range in, in the range of tier levels. Um, our, the REC RDNA activities uh, were shown to be primarily confined to two divisions. So the, the focus, uh, improving existing products and services uh, and also developing new products and services. And third uh, most selected option was that uh, our DNA activities are being conducted uh, to address environmental issues. Um, in terms of uh, uh, funding or uh, revenue invested in these activities, uh, survey participants showed that uh, there has been a slight increase in funding uh, or a stagnation over the past three to five years. And the very similar result was also for the close or near future where participants noted that the amount of funding would either likely increase further or stay the same. So these were, this, these were, were the majority of answers showing in this direction. Uh, the sources of funding for these RDNI activities uh, vary widely among survey participants. Uh, there was a clear majority for a non-reimbursable national government aid, EU government aid, and uh, regional government aid. So these were uh, all grants. Uh, a bit less popular sources of funding or used uh, sources of funding were financial contributions from other companies and uh, equity. A uh, majority of uh, in surveyed participants also noted that sources of funding have not changed much in the past three years. Uh, also, participants were asked to comment on the foreseeable future of European RC sectors in the next five to 10 years, so uh, to identify some trends. Um, and most of the topics mentioned were centered around increasing the RC sector's scale, reliability, affordability, and efficiency. Uh, also, strong focus on cross cutting technologies, uh, sector coupling, and integrated or hybrid systems. Um, some uh, noticeable push towards greater inclusion of uh, and cooperation with hydrogen-based renewable energy systems, but also uh, focus on different technologies such as waste heat recovery, uh, district heating and cooling, and effective heat storage measures uh, will also will, were also shown to to play an uh, important role in the next five to ten years. Uh, technology cooperation, technological cooperation, apologies, uh, was also shown to play a prominent role with uh, around 70% of uh, surveyed stakeholders noting that they had cooperated with third parties in the last uh, three to five years. And uh, also majority showed that uh, many companies work with other EU countries at the same, at the time of the survey and that they also plan future cooperation with other EU countries. The focus of this cooperation was split between uh, focus on developing technology knowledge to influence our R&D activities uh, and or uh, exchanging technological knowledge resulting from previously conducted R&D activities. In terms of policy impacts, uh, which we also try to survey uh, using this tool, uh, the results show that the majority of companies follow policy developments at uh, EU level, uh, but um, around 57% found that EU policy affected their activities, but a bit less of these uh, stake uh, surveyed stakeholders showed that uh, they are not following actually the policy developments uh, in such a close a manner. Um, some different views were uh, on, on the policy impact was that the EU did not give enough attention to hydrogen-based renewable energy research, or too little money is given to solar thermal projects. Uh, the, some stakeholders mentioned that, of course, uh, EU policies and energy policies specifically direct the research of their companies. 
uh, and many different uh, views on on the impact of, of policy on the at the EU level. Um, in terms of what will be the policy measures impacting uh, the sectors in the next three to five years the most, uh, some uh, mentioned greater efforts to decarbonize heating and cooling in the face of CO2 taxation, EU funding measures to allow for RDNA activities, uh, some specific uh, legislative packages such as eco design, uh, uh, renewable energy directive, uh, green deal calls, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, general EU policy in, uh, in general um, will uh, guide uh, the future RDNA activities that was also mentioned, and uh, some uh, topics such as circular economy or energy commun community greater sector integration will play a significant uh, role. Uh, when asked about the favorability of certain framework conditions uh, for RET uptake uh, at the national level, uh, there were also different opinions. So in terms of political conditions, uh, including political support and policy priorities, as well as legal conditions, uh, inclu which included regulations and taxes, there was a mixed perceptions. Uh, there was a, where the voting was divided between not very favorable or uh, favorable or without opinion, showing that there is uh, perhaps a divide uh, between nations uh, in terms of the conditions they have in terms of pol uh, politics and uh, also in legal uh, questions. A clear perception of the imp impact of market conditions and research conditions uh, was uh, uh, there was a generally favorable outcomes and in terms of social conditions such as culture, knowledge and awareness of RHC and financial conditions, um, there was less favorable or mixed perception. Uh, over half of participants either agreed or strongly agreed that the following barriers affected RHC uptake at the national level. Uh, insufficient information about the benefits of RT solutions, our uncertainty around the performance of RT technologies, uncertainty of regulations, lack of policy support, high installation cost, uh, higher competitiveness of traditional solutions. Um, so um, this was the barriers that received the most uh, note from the stakeholders. And some of the conclusions that we could draw already uh, it's clear that uh, European Commission will have, play a significant role in uh, uh, renewable heating and cooling RDNI activities in the future. Uh, funding measures continue to increase, uh, but also the funding programs are all extremely competitive and therefore funding must remain at the forefront of EU policy uh, to ensure that these RC technologies can be developed and take, taken to market. Um, some of the most popular avenues for funding include grants uh, at the national level, so governments have been given the very important role to support uh, development of IRC technologies. Uh, the EU efforts must be also uh, to facilitate greater policy support for the IRC sectors, um, creating more certainty about around regulations and the regulatory process and defining long-term vision for the industry. Um, while national political conditions and legal conditions are not currently perceived as an impactful hindrance, uh, they are also not seen as entirely favorable to national RHC, RDNI activities. So this is also uh, one conclusion that we could take from the survey. So for the moment, that's all from my side. Um, uh, thank you very much for your attention. Uh, if you have any questions about anything that you heard uh, or about the survey that was ongoing, uh, feel free to contact the organizers of this workshop. And I would now give floor to my colleague Irene to explain you about the next uh, steps uh, and the breakout rooms that we will be uh, organizing in a few minutes. So, hello everyone. I hope you can hear me fine. As Andre has said, in a few minutes we will start our breakout room session. Um, you have already been pre-assigned to a certain breakout room, take into account your preferences. So like 
it was decided upon registration, you saw that you had like the option one and option two. So we have tried to respect that in at ma like at maximum level. So I hope you will all be happy. So about these breakup rooms, uh, each breakup room will have a moderator and a member of the RHC secretariat to support uh, guiding the discussion. Once you'll be in that breakout room in Zoom, you will be provided with a link to Mural, which is an online collaboration tool, which I will explain in a few minutes. And just for you to know, please, even if you receive a link to Mural, uh, don't exit the Zoom meeting as at the end of the breakout room discussion, we will go back to the uh, main session uh, that we are now in. So also it's important for you to know that even though I'm sure most of you want to be in all discussions, um, regardless of whichever breakout room you are choosing, at the end of the event, you will receive um, uh, like the PDF of everything that has been discussed. And also afterwards in the event, the moderators of each session will explain you everything that you need to know that uh, about what it has been discussed. So now I will share my screen briefly and I will share you uh, a bit what I know about Mural. <laughs> it's just very simple. Don't worry if you haven't ever used. So I believe you can see my screen now. Um, as you can see, this is just uh, an example of what kind of template you will find in a few minutes. Um, you'll see there's these posits around. Um, you can move them just by clicking on them and move them to the side. Well, now my screen is not responding, but that's, uh, <laughs> that's another thing. But you can just move them around. You can make them bigger. You can make them smaller. And most importantly, you can write on them. And if you need to have a, a bigger zoom here on the right side of the screen, you have this touchpad in which you can just navigate around the bureau. And then you can increase or decrease the zoom, like depending on your necessities. Um, apart from like taking the post-its, as I'm sure in some breakout rooms, there will be lots of people. We have prepared some post-its, but probably won't be enough. If you want to create your own post-it, it's very easy. You just have to double, double click on the screen and then you will have it. And then you can write everything that you need. I believe that in some cases there will be a voting session. To vote, uh, I would ask you to please, uh, just as I'm showing that you can drag the post-its wherever you want. So I don't know which question will be, but if you have views that you agree on, so you can just drag the post-it and move it to agree. That you disagree, well, you just drag the post-it or move it to disagree. That there's no post-its available, double click on the screen and then you will have it. And that's, I think, that's the explanation of Zoom. So now we will proceed to open the breakout rooms. Thanks, Irene. This was very clear. Okay, welcome back. Thanks to the breakout rooms um, uh, leaders, managers, which are mainly the horizontal working groups, managers. Uh, to you guys, uh, I recommend to, uh, prepare a very short summary of the outcomes. So in principle, you have five minutes per breakout room and then five uh, for each of the four uh, rooms makes 20 minutes. That would be what we have scheduled. And then we have also some time for, uh, for questions and answers. And uh, now uh, the next uh, uh, step is uh, an interesting speech by Mr. Teodor Silna. Uh, he's the deputy head of department at the Austrian Federal Ministry for Transport, Innovation and Technology. I believe he is also uh, the national contact point for Horizon Europe, or at least he used to be. Um, I know he has been uh, cooperating quite, quite a lot uh, with, uh, with our Austrian colleagues uh, in the research world, uh, for sure, especially with AEE Intec. Um, so thank you, first of all, uh, Mr. Silna, to uh, accept our invitation, and uh, I, I think you're going to, to present about the research and development priorities uh, on renewable heating and cooling in Austria, and uh, the question you'll be tackling is why demonstration is crucial, am I correct? Yes, <clears throat> and I hope that... Uh... So, yes, now there, there are the slides. 
So thank you to everybody. And I want to tell you that I am I cannot hold a keynote speech in this way. I can only give you some ideas what we are doing in Austria. And as it is a, a workshop, maybe you can think about our ideas and give us also some also ask some guidance what you think if we are the right way. So I want to focus on this things what we are doing and what our ideas behind what we are doing so maybe i can get the next slide who is clicking yeah so that's what i have been told in the preparing of the workshop that i should present to you what is austria doing next slide please So in Austria, we have very ambitious climate goals. We want to be climate neutral uh, at 2040. So we want to be a little bit quicker than the rest of Europe. Uh, but we have also Greens in the, in the government. So therefore, we have higher ambitions. So how to say it. And therefore, the point is, therefore, we think that if we want to reach all these goals, we need a development on one hand of individual technologies, as it also have done by the members of this renewable heating and cooling platform. But we need also to focus on system integration. We need this sector coupling. We need to look on the building and urban systems. We need to look on the urban conversation and the distribution and the storage. And we have to look also on industry and we have to make the link between industry and energy districts and uh, take care of energy efficiency. So it's a really a challenge and we need a systemic approach. Next slide, please. So if you look at Austria's contribution to renewable heating and cooling, it's the next, I think you have to click once again. Uh, you, you know with all that Austria's expert contribute to all this uh, working group because we are very interested in all these things. We are also in the uh, other groups, we are in the solar thermal group, biomass group, but we are also in this horizontal working groups, very much engaged because we think these are really the questions which we have to tackle. So next slide, please. So for example, if you look at the city, at the cities, at the building system, we need integrated system for a decarbonized energy system of cities. And it's not so easy. It's not only some buildings, they have to, uh, to talk one building with the other in, in this energy matter, because otherwise we cannot reach this really decarbonized energy cities. And we can also, we need this also uh, in the planning phase that we are also working on tools for the planning of climate neutral districts and cities. And we need, uh, the third topic here is very important for us also, we need to, to talk with the people because we need to, to bring this transformation strategies to the ground. We need the people that they go with us to be part of this new decarbonized energy city, uh, cities. Next slide. Uh, if you look at this district heating and cooling systems, we have um, at the moment very interesting projects, uh, for example, on temperature reduction, because in, for historical reasons in Austria, the district heating and cooling has a very high temperature. But if we want to come to the point where we can also use uh, waste heat from industry, from server farms, from such things, we have to uh, get uh, district heating systems with lower temperature. And that's really a challenge. And that's why we have a second topic, this whole energy systems, because we have to take care that uh, district heating and cooling system must collect all the energy which is wasted near the, the network. 
and then we can maybe and we hope we can also to decarbonize renewable heating and cooling uh, district systems. The next slide, please, is in building. We have also since 20 years uh, in the building sector, we have project for cost effective uh, buildings for energy saving buildings. At the moment, we have one very interesting things in retrofitting of buildings. We have to take care of historical buildings. It's also in line with the new Bauhaus ideas and such things. But we have all, always think at the whole system and have to look what we can do if we can, for example, if we can give energy to a historical building from a new built building, which is a plus energy building, to get both to zero at the end of the day. And that's uh, really challenges that we try to tackle. The next slide, please. And for industry, I told you we have to find, on the one hand, the right decarbonization ways to, to new concepts for, to bring the industry with their to, how to say it here, here in this group, to serve uh, renewable heat and cooling for the industry to bring, make them as a process, process energy from renewables bring their energy consumption down and use the waste heat. And that's always the system approach very difficult because if, for example, we look at server farms for uh, computer industry and such things, uh, if they use energy efficient servers, we have, don't have enough waste heat for our district heating. That's the point where we have always care, have in mind what we are doing at the moment and how does it fit in the whole system. Next point, please. So Austria is uh, for this uh, things also in very as in a very various. Uh, international cooperation and collaboration, as we you know it, maybe we have, we are also now in mission innovation, we are in different international energy agency uh, TCPs, maybe I have on the next slide a little more of this things what we are doing. Yeah, yeah that, that's a slide I missed for, because we have in IA, we are engaged in urban Europe, we are engaged in the air and at smart energy systems, we are engaged in the new upcoming uh, clean energy transition uh, partnership, we are engaged also in the, the striving urban transition partnership, and a uh, lot of other things, because we think that we, you need to, to work together to find the right solution at the right place. And that's why we think that this international collaboration is very, very uh, a high, of a very high importance. And it's very fruitful for us to learn and hear what other countries are doing. Next slide, please. So one point on the slides is our so-called Vorzeigeregion Energie. It's something like the German showcases in this, in this, if you know this better. So we want to find really regions, places where we can demonstrate the things because we think there are a lot of things on the table, technologies on the table, but we have to demonstrate them and we have to test how they fit together in the system. And at the moment we have three regions on, on the table and uh, financing them. One is uh, hydrogen, one is new energy for industry, and the third is green energy lab, which is more or less around buildings and energy systems for cities and houses. And they are very important for us to show as is it called in German, is showcases to, to show the people that it's possible. Next slide, please. And for example, one of these uh, projects which we are doing with district heating and cooling, we have 
it in one project, all this, as you can see it on the map, all these different district heating systems. And we try on each system something different and want to learn. And at the next step then give the information what we have learned, for example, in Salzburg, also to Leibniz or to Vienna to find really the best solution for the best district heating system. Therefore, we have 27 project partners in this one project. And it's really a nice thing where we can, we hope we can demonstrate that this string heating system could be run with renewables. Next slide, please. We have also such things with, uh, with the pictures, the industry in uh, the backyard. It's solar process heat is very important for us we think that renewable heating and cooling platform can very be a nice place to discuss such things we have also in this in austria called dach cooperation where we try to work with switzerland and germany in uh, projects for the three countries we are open for other countries also but it's easier for us to make it in countries where we speak the same language that's all i want to say it's not we we really would be happy if we find also partners from other countries but for the government it's easier to talk as austrian government with the german government it's not so easy to talk, for example, with the Spanish government. It's only the language, but and therefore we have this DACH cooperation. But we think, nevertheless, that this idea of projects in two or three countries together could be really a nice point to find solutions. Because uh, I have a little feeling uh, from my experience in the EU, in the EU programs, that there is a very interesting and good project there, but sometimes they are a bit too big. They are not so flexible. They could not react on the, because they have a contract with 27 countries for five years and they have to fulfill what they have written in the contract. And if you make it with two or three countries, you can say, hey, we find that is this way is maybe not the best, let us try another way. And you have then only two or three uh, government organizations, civil servants, to tell them that you want to change the contract a little bit. And therefore, these projects are a little bit more flexible. And I think they are nice projects ongoing there. The next slide, please. Yeah, that's one of our City of Tomorrow projects. This is at the moment a big point, and I think also in, in the rest of Europe, a big point that we have at the moment, a renovation rate at less than 1%. And we all in this uh, group, in this workshop, know that we have to come up to 3%, maybe so we need more. So we have to find solution that this could be done quicker, cheaper, but also better. And therefore, we have a lot of difficult questions to tackle. And that's the point why we have a strong focus in our research and innovation program on this renovation market, because we have a strong feeling that this European renovation wave must be directed in the right way. Otherwise, we have stranded costs. And that's the point where we at the moment should really have a focus on research and innovation on this renovation market. So I got uh, that I have only one minute, but I think I'm near to the end. I have only one project more, which is also a nice project on the picture which shows what we are also trying in cities with the existing uh, district heating and cooling system. We try to, as it is written, we try to use uh, uh, waste heat from shops, from such things. We try to use waste heat from data centers. We, but we also try to find ways to use geothermal energy for the district heating. And if you try it in a 
old city, you will realize or you will know that it's not only a technical question because it's not so easy to go in an old city and tell the people that you are drilling a hole one, two hundred meters deep uh, in the middle of the street and you will have this uh, driller as uh, a spore hole one, two months. So this is really a challenge, but it we have the first projects in this way ongoing and they look really nice. There's really a chance to get energy for our district heating system also in the old buildings. It's possible. And that's my, my I think it's my last slide. Yeah, but I think we can do it. We have to show that we can do it to get the people in the cities, in the regions, to go this way with us. And that's my message to you and why I have in the heading, why we need demonstration. We have to show that it's possible. Thank you. Thanks to you, Theodor. Um, well, impressive from my perspective because uh, I must admit that, or not admit, but I must say that the, the, the involvement of the Austrian government, at least from your side, in R&D and D is, uh, is really huge. And uh, I see most of the technologies and the approaches you mentioned, we are familiar with uh, in the ATIP. So it's, uh, this shows that there is uh, a, a good cooperation between the Austrian government and the EU level. I, I, I'm pretty sure we can say the same for every European country. So uh, first of all, congratulations. Um, you're really one of uh, what Vanna Weiss from AE Intec, you know him very well, I guess, uh, calls uh, uh, national champions. And one of our, uh, of our uh, uh, let's say, um, uh, objectives, especially at the solar thermal uh, panel, is to, 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 to find people like you who can, uh, I, I don't want to say advocate, but really push forward uh, the, the, the topics of RHC and solar in particular, in this case, uh, at the national level, because this is uh, partially what I think is missing. And um, yeah, so thanks a lot. Very clear presentation, very rich. <laughs> Uh, just one. Allow me one, one comment. You, you mentioned something which I uh, which uh, I agree to uh, when you talked about uh, many European projects being uh, too large, or especially uh, you, you you focus on flexibility being not enough flexible. Uh, I, I agree. Often this is the case, uh, but I would add that not always, but sometimes, to some extent, this is also the fault of the consortia, because often we are a bit too concerned to, you know, stick exactly to what the contract is saying. And I'm not saying we can do whatever we want, especially in, in the high TRL uh, actions. I mean, uh, you, you, you promise something, you more or less have to do it, but there is more room than we often think uh, to, to change uh, some of the, of the rules uh, after the grant has been uh, yeah. granted. So, sure. yeah. Sure. Please. Yeah. <laughs> okay. And um, yeah, well, and then I would like, uh, I, I think we have a couple of minutes for questions. Uh, so does anybody um, in the audience have a specific question for uh, Turatsilna? Don't be shy. Uh, I have one, but- uh, I have I one too. Okay, great. So please go ahead. I Hello. talked too much already. No, just a, a question. In the beginning, you claimed this uh, incredible uh, target of reaching climate neutrality by 2040 instead of 2050, like everybody else. So I guess you see some, uh, some uh, competitive advantage in anticipating the date besides the greater goal of saving the world. So can I ask you, uh, what do you see in this, uh, in this uh, challenging goal of reaching neutrality? 10 years before and the rest of the year. <laughs> uh, it's a political decision to, to uh, say that we can uh, be quicker as the rest of Europe. 
but at the point, uh, as you know, Austria has in the field of electricity, for example, we have a good starting point. We have a uh, huge hydropower. And so we have at the moment a share of 70 to 75 percent of renewables in the electricity market. So if we don't say we want to be, for example, uh, in the electricity market, we want to be renewable. 100% in 2030, otherwise it would not be a challenge. So, and if you really want to, to come a step forward with this climate neutrality, you have to really have a vision and you, that's what we are thinking and we have to talk to the people and what's in the whole European Union always difficult, the, you have always to struggle and fight if you have 42 or 43 percent of renewables and you have uh, one month or two months discussion of you have 36 or 37 percent of renewables and we think if we want to bring the people that they do something that they think we can do it we have to show them a clear vision with a clear goal, and the clear goal is zero emissions, climate neutrality, forget all this uh, 35%, 36%. We want 100% renewables and we want it now. I don't know if we can reach it, but from this governance side, you have to come with a clear message. We don't move. A uh, one percent more, a second percent more. We have to tell the people we want really a change in the system, and we believe at, that it is possible. Thank you, Dieter. <laughs> Thank you for doing that. <laughs> okay, actually, we are behind schedule, but I see Todore Media posted a question. Uh, I'm reading out loud for the first time. So what the specific, what are yes, the specific activities and measures uh, for end users? How do you deal with the end users? So it's about citizens and end users like industrial yeah, yeah, people. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yes, yes. Yeah, in the cities where we have, uh, for example, we have also this is social transformation on the, on the table. We have also a program which deals with this social transformation. We have at our buildings, on our demonstration buildings, we have at, at a lot of research, not at all, but at a lot of research programs we have afterwards when they are erected. We have uh, programs where we evaluate how the people feel in these buildings if it's nice there, if it's not nice there, what we can do better. In the special field of renovation, we have also the situation that people want to live in the building and then we renovate it. So we have also special, we try, we are not at the end of our experience, but we try to talk with the people, how we can make this renovation, if they can change the, the flat for, one month or not, or if we, for example, the, our, our friends from Gleistorf have some nice projects where we make this renovation really from the outside and the people could stay in their, in their flats. And we have always to, to ask the people afterwards, what was going on? Was it good? Was it not good? And therefore, we have also some some NGOs for a special, which get always nice contracts from us to make this uh, user behavior, this uh, uh, studies about the feelings of the people, because that's why we think we been we have to have them on board. Here, yeah, thanks. Yeah. Last chance for a very last question, if any. Otherwise, we move forward because we're ten minutes behind schedule. Okay, thanks, Teodor. Thanks again. Keep in touch. Thank you. And uh, stay awesome. connected if you have time. Otherwise, see yeah. you soon. Thank you. <laughs> and um, yeah, now it's time for the breakout room summary. Um, 
now uh, I don't know if you're uh, if you're concerned about being the first, <laughs> so I will very directly go in the order uh, of appearance in the on the um, agenda. First one would be you, Giorgio, uh, with the districts. You ready? Yes, I'm ready. Thank you, Marco. Great. I have five minutes, right? You have five minutes. Yeah. If perfect. it's four, even better. Okay. Perfect. It will be four. <laughs> Uh, please let me thank all the participants to the breakout room on districts. We had some very interesting results to share with all of you. Uh, regarding, I will start from the identified activities as most common nowadays uh, regarding renewability and pooling in districts. Uh, the main trends identified by the participants are related to the sustainable sources of heat, the efficient and low temperature distribution of heat, and the interaction with other networks with the interesting interaction between the electricity, the heating, the heating and cooling, and the water networks within districts. Then uh, moving to the missing activities that they would like to see more uh, supported and more uh, focus of the investments and of the research in the next years. Uh, um, the participants highlighted the need to investigate more on district cooling, on the coordination and optimization of the existing and of the new district heating and cooling system, saying in the flexibility of uh, district heating and cooling system, especially with the uh, uh, focus on the use of building flexibility as heat storage and uh, items for smart management, peak shaving, etc. And uh, a last uh, topic, uh, very interesting to investigate, uh, is the one of energy storage. Then, uh, regarding the research and innovation uh, trends uh, identified and interesting for the future, we mm, discussed these two boxes of the mural together. Um, the main areas uh, identified were digitalization, so all the models related to uh, machine learning, predictive model, control, uh, etc. The market trends uh, in the sense of need for more pilot-based research and development activities involving businesses and industries, uh, the uh, identification of a gap between the trends uh, set by the European Commission, by institution uh, in general, and the needs of industries. Then the topic of prosumers and energy communities, the trends related with networks in terms of low temperature networks, uh, long term heat storage and flexibility, and then to conclude, as mentioned before, the interaction with the electricity sector. Another interesting outcome is related to the um, trend of investments in research and developments in uh, renewable heating and cooling districts, uh, which uh, on the opposite of the outcomes of the a survey, um, according to the participant to the working group, to the breakout room, uh, is decreasing in the last years and not increasing as I like by the survey, but we identified that there is a large stakeholder discrepancy. The participants to the breakout room were mainly from the research, research institution, consulting and ac academia, while the respondents to the survey were mainly from industry. And indeed, the participants to break the breakout room who came from the industry sector were uh, in good agreement with the increasing trends. Then to conclude, uh, the policy measures that can have a significant impact on uh, the uh, on renewable energy and cooling in district, for sure, the most important, according to the participant, is the need to invest in demo project, in demonstrative pilot project to demonstrate the feasibility of the, this kind of solutions. While uh, regarding the measures that are missing and lacking, uh, the most important one that was highlighted was the need to identify, to set in the policies, in the the uh, national and uh, EU legislation, a clear and binding target for countries and regions to include uh, renewable heating and cooling in their energy policies. Then we have uh, also other very interesting results, but I think we, I have finished my, my minutes. Thanks. Thank you. That, Thank you. <clears throat> perfectly on time. Okay. Um, I, I, we, we keep the, if any question, the Q&A uh, session at the end. So if you have questions, please write, uh, write them somewhere and you can put those either a voice, uh, raising your hand uh, or uh, putting those in the chat. Uh, Gerhard, I think it's your turn for the horizontal working group of cities. Gerhard Stohi. Okay, I can 
Thank you, Ogil. Thank you very much. I think we have had a, an interesting and lively discussion. In general, I must say it's not so simple to identify uh, technologies and RDNI um, yeah, activities needed because uh, what is needed on city level is also needed on district level and sometimes on building level. And so to separate this is not so simple. However, uh, I think we can summarize that there are at least two big topics uh, which are really related to the district and to the city level especially. And this is on the one hand side, uh, digitalization um, aspects to um, on the one hand side, the planning. Uh, we, we are facing huge challenges in regards to uh, the transformation of energy systems and especially heating and cooling systems in the Sonne city level. And uh, it became very clear in the discussion that there is a need for better and improved uh, planning tools, monitoring tools, uh, and also uh, apps and services for the user. Uh, we need more transparency of energy uh, demand, energy performance, and energy activities of households, uh, and that, that they uh, can interact, um, perhaps share energy, etc. So, providing um, digital solutions and services um, uh, to the uh, to the participants to the residents is an important aspect and the second big beside the digitalization and digital services um, the second big aspect is um, uh, is infrastructure um, because the infrastructure is playing a big big role on district and on city level uh, we have to transform our infrastructure uh, the district heating system has to reduce the temperature. The gas infrastructure has either to be deleted or, or uh, yeah, uh, yeah, deleted or replaced by a hydrogen infrastructure. Perhaps we don't know exactly. The electricity will play a much bigger role in future, and so the question is how to do that transformation. And everything has to be combined with an increase in uh, in efficiency. And so what we identified is we need uh, the uh, yeah, solutions, how to do that in a better way. Uh, so, for example, also to combine the renewal, renewing infrastructure of water, communication, heating and cooling, also technologies and activities which allow to, uh, to do the transformation in a more strategic way and to use synergy effects by uh, improvements in the infrastructure is an important aspect which we identified. Uh, perhaps other aspects are um, the, for sure, the integration of uh, waste heat and renewable heat uh, in the district heating systems is important. Uh, uh, the reduction of temperature, as already mentioned, is an aspect, um, but also uh, the combination with uh, geothermal energy is an important uh, uh, aspect. We uh, see two big issue uh, uh, challenges. The one thing is to integrate um, yeah, to integrate uh, low temperature heat sources like uh, waste heat and um, solar thermal energy into the district heating systems. And the other thing is to integrate geothermal energy. And both aspects uh, needs a specific um, yeah, change and transformation of the district heating uh, structure. Uh, and therefore, many activities are needed to, to improve the planning, uh, to improve the technical aspects to reduce temperature and uh, to support the transformation. So these are more general approaches in that regard. In, uh, it's not a clear uh, R&D needs described, but these are the challenges uh, where we see the need uh, to, uh, to, to improve the situation uh, for, district uh, for renewable heating and cooling on the, district uh, on the city level digitalization and infrastructure are the main topics here which were identified. Thank you, Gerhard. So this was it for the cities, uh, horizontal working group. Next comes buildings. So Eugen Skyberg, if you would like to take the floor. Yep, I can briefly go through <clears throat> uh, responses and feedback from, the, from our breakout group on the buildings. So initially we stated a number of different uh, activities which has been identified earlier as important. They were all like, confirmed. So for example, retrofitting, energy efficiency, heat storage, 
the cogeneration in buildings, energy systems, uh, hybridization of uh, energy supply and energy systems, flexibility, heat pumps, including ground source, solar thermal, PVT, bioheat, cooling, control, automation, digitalization. These were mentioned uh, <clears throat> and uh, confirmed by the participants as important. Uh, however, uh, missing activities uh, have partly been stated uh, through the survey that was uh, sent out. Uh, missing activities include uh, hydrogen, for example, uh, including uh, waste heat recovery from hydrogen, low temperature heating systems, a focus on that, seasonal heat storages, green gases, hybrid renewable solutions, smart buildings, thermal cooling technologies standardization and certification for hybrid systems and also mentioned in uh, uh, now the solar for production of hydrogen uh, more focus on energy storage needed uh, efficiency increase in solar thermal systems and also energy efficiency and renewable energy sources in uh, or systems in historical buildings so parts of this has been mentioned in the SRIA uh, but uh, more focus is uh, needed it seems from the discussion Strong trends in uh, research development and innovation activities. Uh, a number was mentioned, solar thermal PVT and so on. Uh, ambient heat, heat storage, important. So these are some uh, important trends. Uh, let's say trends in the, within the companies. A uh, number mentioned, for example, hydrogen syst hybrid systems there, more, more focus on cooling. And also hydrogen has been mentioned again. It seems like hydrogen, uh, we are not getting rid of the hydrogen issue here. So hydrogen is a part of the solution, uh, it seems. Yeah, and also heat storage, including long-term storage was mentioned. Then we went into the revenue invested into research development and innovation activities. Uh, we had a small vote. Uh, are the funds sufficient? Uh, is the trend increasing? Uh, partly agreeing and partly disagreeing. So uh, it seems like uh, there's a feeling that there's a significant significant competition with uh, electricity, um, that's for sure, and also with hydrogen. And maybe less funds are directed uh, towards uh, our part, uh, so the renewable heating and cooling, and more to electricity and hydrogen. And uh, it's a question if the funds available is uh, really enough to reach for decarbonization in the renewable heating and cooling sector, especially if you want to reach this, that uh, within 2040 and even 2050. So uh, regarding uh, EU policy measures uh, and so on, so which show, which show the measures are most important for uh, Let's say funds, commercial for deployment, uh, policies, support to basic research, important education, training, certification. But also mentioned in addition is support for end users, uh, plus uh, increased interaction between the research and uh, companies, and also uh, pointing towards stronger national policies needed. So not only on the EU level, but also on the national levels. So which uh, measures are missing, lacking? Uh, that could be a proof of concept to risk-free financing, as uh, mentioned in the survey feedback. Uh, yeah, policies, replacement of all inefficient heating systems, uh, thermal storage, demonstration for NSEB and energy positive buildings, and uh, streamlining of actions programs on heat, on heat supply and integration in buildings. So these are some specific feedbacks uh, regarding in the different uh, aspects uh, from our breakout uh, session. Thank you, Ivan. Yep. Very clear. And uh, then last but not least, uh, is Christoph Brunner uh, about industries. Please, Christoph. Yeah, thank you very much, Marco. Yeah, uh, first of all, I want to thank you to all um, participants in my breakout uh, session about uh, industries. I think it was quite good uh, discussions and a uh, lot of input uh, from, from the participants. Um, coming to uh, the technologies first, um, as a, it was uh, from the identified activities, 
Um, we had this focus on digitalization of these hybrid energy systems, um, new process technologies. This was this main identified activities. And uh, then um, additional uh, technologies um, were presented, were, were discussed, uh, which are maybe missing um, in the SRIA. On the one hand, this body generation, tree generation um, of energy in combination with waste heat. This was one, one important point that was mentioned. Then um, heat pumps, this is in the priorities, uh, but um, the importance of heat pumps at higher temperature, and here we are speaking higher temperature above 250 degrees, uh, maybe higher. Um, this is something very important for, for the industry. Uh, there's something where, where uh, research has to be done uh, in industry. Uh, another important um, part is storage, what we heard already, but uh, again, for the industry at higher temperature level, you can find it in the priorities, but this was again underlined. This is, um, um, yeah, research has to be done uh, in this field. Um, temperatures between 100, 200 degrees. This is something um, what, what is missing and where, where research has been done. Um, then there was also uh, um, uh, an example given from a project, and uh, this, this should be a kind of a case study in the cement industry uh, to close CO2 circles um, and to create uh, industry as a prosumer. This means it's not only the exchange of um, heat uh, with district heating uh, network, that this is important uh, as well, but not only. It's also about resource exchange. So it means which kind of resources from the environment uh, of an industry, from a city, for example, waste streams, uh, waste water streams, can be an uh, energy supply, uh, uh, a primary energy supply for the industry, it can be converted in a in a in a in an energy used um, um, technology. Um, then. Also, um, there was this input on solar thermal energy, um, but here, especially at higher temperature, um, uh, the participants see here uh, a lot of research um, activities or other needs. We, of course, we also have this, let's say, this, um, let's say, uh, important topics of electrification. Um, what does this mean for the industry? Uh, as you know, electrification is mentioned in certain groups of, of, uh, of uh, stakeholders as this energy supply um, or technology for the industry for the future. Uh, we were discussing this and um, yeah, um, on the one hand, it is clear it is easier to implement maybe, but on the other hand, uh, I think also from the experts in the discussion was clear that this could be not this only solution. And in a similar way, also hydrogen uh, integration was discussed. Um, we were clear that uh, hydrogen should not be used for low temperature processes, also not for, for buildings, for example, this was shortly mentioned. Um, so again, the use uh, of different renewable energy sources under these exergetic considerations so to consider the temperature uh, needs, um, this is uh, important and this is also for hydrogen important. And then um, the experts saw a good combination of uh, renewable heating and cooling technologies with um, this conversion of hydrogen into usable energy. Um, and then uh, last point was the policy activities. And here there were some, some ideas coming up um, on the one hand to consider this primary energy savings for the industry as an as important point really to, to look on, 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 on these savings. Also um, the, this keyword of CO2 housekeeping for the industry uh, was given. We shortly discussed also the labeling of products from the industry. This was mentioned as the, this is maybe too difficult and, uh, to realize um, or maybe to think about which kind of um, um, yeah, methodologies could be used here to find here a good solution. And um, as the last point was also mentioned that uh, financing models are needed, uh, new innovative models are here needed, and um, yeah, this in combination with a, a good technical uh, assessment, uh, maybe this taxonomy uh, could be something what, what can, can be combined here with the, with the 
technical uh, assessment could be a good solution to combine technical approach, financial approach, and to boost um, renewable energy technologies here in the industry. Thank you. Thanks, Christoph. And we went through all the four uh, breakout rooms. Um, any question on that? I, I, I see uh, Thomas Walter posted a message. Uh, I think this was till the end of uh, Theodor Zildner, Zildner's presentation. Uh, you're talking about the fact that end users are not interested in technicalities of heating and cooling and they rely on experts. Well, this I think leads us back to, the, to an ancient discussion about, uh, about the role of, uh, of technicians and installers, especially and consequently on, on the training. Uh, I think this is a discussion which uh, I've been seeing ever since I started working now in the sector and uh, I know the, the renewable uh, energy directive also had a quite an important uh, part about training. I don't think the results are as good as was expected uh, back uh, 10 years ago or more when it was uh, introduced. But I'm open to comment on this or uh, to any other question you might have now about uh, the, the outcome of the breakout rooms. You must be quick because in one minute I'll be switching to the final presentation. Okay, so if you don't have any question, I think we shall move now to the final presentation given by Greg Arrowsmith. He is policy officer at UREX. And uh, he will be present, giving a presentation on financial, on how to finance RHC priorities. Uh, it's an insight from the project Smart Spend, which uh, UREX is a member of. So Greg, the floor is yours. Thank you very much. And can I just check that you can hear me okay? I'm going to take that as a yes. Can you thumbs up? Good. Uh, thank you for three or four minutes of your time just to introduce this important uh, report from another project uh, to you. I think that this uh, is relevant to your discussions today because it fills in uh, some questions you may have about how you could finance some of the work which is in the SRIA. Uh, it was a report produced by Zabala in the Smart Spend project. The title is Mapping Report on Funding Instruments for Energy Innovation, and they produced it in May, so the information is pretty up to date. Uh, on the slide, which you should see now, you can see the scope of the report. So. Public funding is in the scope, private funding is in the scope, and they throw in a few uh, case studies. And if I click through this, you can see that of the European funding, uh, the scope is pretty broad with Horizon Europe covered and some of the other important funding streams, which we'll see emerging in the next decade, like the Innovation Fund uh, covered as well. There are also some slightly smaller pots of money which are in the scope of the report. The report covers national funding as well, and uh, some countries uh, take innovation more seriously than others and consequently have uh, more national funding available. And in particular, we dive into the national funding available in the countries you can see here, some of which are considered to be leaders in innovation, and some of which are lagging behind. Uh, and the final dimension of public funding relates to regions. So if you look within the national level, you can find uh, regions which spend more on R&D, uh, often clustered around uh, centers of population. And so our report looks at uh, regions within uh, the countries that you can see here and looks at specific regional funding. Finally, uh, I think an area that we may be less familiar with as a community is what is available from the private sector. Uh, this chart shows roughly what type of 
private provider of finance is willing to invest at what stage of maturity of technology. And in fact, in a second, I'm going to show you the report itself, which uh, gives you uh, a survey of a great many different private providers of finance, which I think is very useful. I think these lists are um, good things to have at one's fingertips. But before I do that, let me just round off with a uh, new chapter, which analyzes the recovery and resilience facility plans of member states. These were submitted to the commission at the end of April. Uh, member states were given roughly 300 billion euros to spend as grants in the next two years on um, projects which can help them reinvigorate their economies as they come out of the coronavirus crisis. And some are devoting more of their funding to energy than others. Uh, the bottom of the list you have Slovenia, uh, and smart spend is going to be having a meeting with a senior government representative in Slovenia to discuss why this is and to make recommendations on how uh, Slovenian resources can be put uh, uh, better towards energy innovation, including the resources that they have under this national plan. And so a message to you is if you wish to be part of this and if you'd like to meet um, this minister because you have some activity in Slovenia and you have something, a message that you want to pass, then do contact me because I can include you in this group. Okay, that's it for the slideshow. I'm just going to show you the report here quickly, and in particular, this nice section at the back that runs through a bunch of different private providers of finance, gives you an indication of where they wish to operate and profiles them as well. So uh, that could be very useful. Um, and it's full of other interesting insights as well. For example, as I, I hadn't been aware that the KFW, for example, in uh, Germany is willing to give loans to projects outside Germany. Uh, so these kind of things, which you may think you, you know, in fact, if you look in the report, you find some uh, insights there, which perhaps uh, are new to you. And in the chat, I sent the link. I'm just going to send it once more because I failed to mention the name of the report in the link. Uh, you can pick it up there and I hope you enjoy reading it. Thanks, Greg. All clear. And we're done, I think. We're through the entire agenda and I'm proud that we are perfectly on time. So I will spend one, perhaps two minutes for closing remarks. Um, well, first of all, just a general comment uh, about what this workshop, uh, why we did this workshop. So for us, it is for, on the one hand, a way to communicate the outcomes of the survey uh, we had. Um, but on the other hand, it's, uh, it has been a way for validating those. And uh, as a matter of fact, the, I have the feeling the discussion in the breakout rooms uh, was quite uh, good, at least for, for sure in the one about uh, districts. Uh, I appreciated uh, lots of questions and uh, comments and contributions. So what we will be doing now is analyzing the outputs of the breakout room discussion. And uh, at the end, embed those in the final report which will be a report on the implementation of our R&D priori R &D priorities. Now, I don't know exactly how those will embedded, be embedded. It won't be name by name, but I mean, the general thoughts and ideas will for sure flow into the final document, which uh, we aim at uh, completing uh, around between uh, September and October, and uh, it will sooner or later be published on the uh, RHC uh, AT platform uh, website, sorry. Um, and I'm pretty sure if you are in any of our uh, distribution lists, which I believe because you're here, uh, you will receive the information. Uh, and finally, before uh, I say goodbye to all of you, I would warmly like to thank, I would like to warmly thank uh, Alexander Sutu from Sorry Heat Europe, Irene Gea from uh, European Heat Pump Association, and of course, Andrei Mieszek from uh, UREC, because they have 
honestly done a great work in preparing this workshop. Uh, using Mural and uh, matching it with uh, Zoom is, is not trivial and uh, setting up everything um, in a way that worked is really appreciated. So thank, thanks to all you guys and uh, to you soon. Thank you too, uh, Marco. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. 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 Thank you.